Yes, yes. Well, I've got, I've got a couple of examples of um, design to share with us tonight. So let's start off with some floating design. Um, and uh, these are giant Amazon water lilies. Um, they're they're tr <clears throat> truly amazing. These, these are the most huge leaves you could ever imagine. Uh, they can grow up to about uh, 10 feet across or three meters. Now that really is enormous uh, for leaves. And, um, <clears throat> but uh, bigger is not always better. There are pros and cons to having large things in living things as well as in um, uh, uh, artifacts and buildings and things like that. So what about giant leaves? Well, there is an advantage in that leaves are the main area for photosynthesis in plants. So if you have really big leaves, you have a very large surface area for photosynthesis, which of course is how the plant gains energy, makes its food, and feeds the rest of the world, of course, but also feeds itself. There is a disadvantage, of course, that uh, when you have larger leaves, you've got a huge leaf mass and that is heavy and it uses more of the plant's resources to actually uh, maintain. Uh, the plant has to actually build this and to maintain it. So how do we get the balance right with this for this particular plant? Well, some scientists at uh, Oxford University actually um, uh, associated with a, a couple of international colleagues decided they would study these leaves to see how they work because they are so big, uh, they should be so heavy that they should sink, but they don't. They float and they're very efficient. And so they studied the, the structure of these leaves. Now you can see in this photo here, there's um, a pattern of leaf veins. So these leaves have veins just like any other plant. And the pattern of leaf veins if you, is uh, clearer if you turn it upside down and look at the back. And so uh, this group of scientists, which included a mathematician and a physicist, actually studied this pattern of um, leaf veins uh, for the, the actual geometrical design, as well as the uh, substances that it's actually made of. It is very light, but it's also the um, the pattern of this design, how all of the this lattice work, how all that fits together that enables this plant to function. So in order to be this big, but still function, because all of those veins there not only hold the leaf up, they also uh, transport all the nutrients that have been made in the leaf and also transport the raw materials that the leaf also needs, all its minerals and, and uh, plant hormones and things like that. And this network of veins they found was amazingly strong, but uh, it's very, very light. So that way the leaves can be that big and they can float. Now, um, when you have leaves that are this big, this is, these are growing in a, 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 a glass house, of course, um, so they're well protected. But normally these things uh, grow in rivers. They are called Amazon uh, water lilies because they grow in the Amazon where there's a lot of uh, life. There are lots of wading birds and lots of water creatures who are going to be blundering around in the water and could easily damage these leaves. So they do need to be able to cope with that. Uh, part of that is that they, they are flexible, they will bend, but also this structure helps. See how they, um, as they uh, grow, they never completely flatten out. Uh, and that's, these ones are fully grown, these, these big round ones, um, the smaller one in the center is still growing there and they never completely flatten out. They do have a distinct edge, which you can see here, uh, that stands upright, and that will give them some protection from the surrounding water creatures and, uh, and from uh, wading, help uh, protect them from wading birds. And there is, there, there's a very distinct deliberate fold there. So they are very flexible, and that avoids damage by birds and other water creatures and uh, having that upturned edge also gives them a bit of protection there. Uh, but you do have a problem if you live in a very rainy area 
or if this plant grows in a very rainy area. And as we said, it, its name is the Amazon water lily because it grows in the Amazon, which of course is a rainforest, so there's lots of rain. So water uh, runs off the uh, small water lily leaves. There's a small normal size water lily leaf there. And of course, they're, they're just flat like discs. Rain just runs uh, straight off those. But these large, large uh, leaves with their folded edge uh, they could easily fill up with water and of course water is heavy and that means they'd sink. So you've undone uh, the advantages of having the large leaves. Well, in fact, they, um, they have holes for rain drainage. Now think about all of that might seem like a little thing, but it, it would be enough to uh, make these leaves dysfunctional. In order for these leaves to be, to be functional, you need a lot of planning ahead. You need to, to know that you can uh, produce this network of veins, which is made out of strong but light materials that's going to be flexible enough to avoid the damage by birds and by other water creatures uh, because they will already be there. And you do need to have those holes for the rainwater to flow through. So we now have this very efficient structure, and this is what the scientists who, uh, who did this study wrote. We show that the geometric form of the leaf is structurally more efficient than those of other smaller species of water lilies. Now, if you're building something, if you're building a, a piece of machinery and you want it to work more efficiently, uh, what do you need to do? You need to get a, a smarter and cleverer creator onto the job who understands how a building or structure or a piece of machinery works and what are the properties of its components? How are you going to get them to work more efficiently? So what they're saying here is that, yes, these are structurally the most efficient um, leaves you could imagine for water lilies if you want to grow them very large. Doesn't that indicate that uh, there was a more efficient or cleverer designer someone who had that forethought even down to the small thing like having the, the holes for the rainwater to grow in. So, uh, and then they made <laughs> this, uh, this statement, um, and this was one of the scientists who was involved in it uh, from the uh, Oxford University Botanic Gardens. Um, Remarkable structures in nature can help us unlock design challenges in engineering. Now, notice they cannot avoid using the word design. There's just no other way to describe what you have got here. And, and again, it's a challenge in engineering. Now, engineering is not something that happens by itself. It's the result of creative minds and clever manipulation, taking advantage of the properties of matter and energy and using it to build something that has plan and purpose. Now, they went on to say the form of these water lilies could inspire giant floating platforms, such as solar panels out in the ocean. Well, that sounds like a good idea. If you want solar panels out in the ocean, they're going to have to cope with the sort of problems that the water lily leaves grow uh, out, in the, out in the real world where there's water moving and where there are um, other living things. But notice their last statement there. There's a lot we can learn from leaves. Well, there's a lot we can learn from studying leaves, but it is, is it the leaves themselves that built this? I think we need to uh, look at these leaves and yes, there is a lot we can learn from them, but there is even more than we could, that we can learn from the, the creator of these leaves. Because when you see something like that, that is the result that is brilliantly designed and they admit this is design, this is engineering, you should be thinking, well, we're really learning from the designer and the engineer, not from the leaves themselves because the leaves didn't make themselves and the evidence is clearly there of plan and purpose, of forethought, of clever manipulation.